不同类型的产品的话，你们有竞争对手吗？现在什么样产品没有？ This woman is the co-owner of a Chinese investment company. She's considering whether to provide funding to this tech startup. In China now, 12,000 startups are being created every day. They are springing up one after another in next generation industries, aiming for a stock listing. And flowing into these ventures is an estimated 17 trillion US dollars in personal assets. It's a surging investment boom that has tapped into the pocketbooks of 1.4 billion people. Fueling this trend are new private sector investment companies. With some interests as high as 30% per annum, they are magnets for money from wealthy individual investors. Moving all of this capital are new financial service businesses which use the internet to gather money. This company promises an annual interest rate of 9%, guaranteeing the principal investment and interest. But it's not all smooth sailing in this red hot boom. China wants to shed its label as the world's factory as it pursues new growth industries. But will the personal assets of 1.4 billion people trigger the country's next round of growth? Now China is conducting an epic experiment, uniting the public and private sectors. We follow the tireless desire for growth of the great dragon. This is the Pudong New District in the city of Shanghai, known as China's financial capital. It is said that financial dealings in Pudong exceed $270 billion a day. The district is like a pumping heart, injecting the lifeblood of money into the Chinese economy. Some 6,000 financial institutions, including major state-owned banks, jockey for space and business in this district, their financial clout climbing as Pudong's profile grows. A new force emerging in Pudong are private sector investment companies. A number of investment companies gathered on this day to look for promising startups in the field of virtual reality. Virtual reality is expected to explode into a $70 billion industry worldwide within four years, and investment companies are all angling for a piece of the market. Many of the owners are in their 20s and 30s, who collect their investments in the millions of dollars, and they're all vying hard to put money into up-and-coming ventures. The hottest item shown at this event is a virtual dating game. In 
investment company co-owner, Pan Xiaoxi, is always on the lookout for a promising startup. Pan Xiaoxi is a rare breed in this financial hub, where few women hold senior positions. She had a strong desire to contribute to China's tremendous growth. Founded in 2012, the business was named the Fuafui Group, which means brilliant China. The firm employs 50 people. They invest millions of dollars in high-tech companies and profit by getting those companies listed on stock exchanges. Their financial backing comes from the wealthy, rich investors and business owners, for example. The Fuafui Group started with $45 million in capital. It has tripled that to $136 million. Pan says she imposes an annual investment yield threshold on herself of 30%. Today, she's having a meeting with a co-owner who's proposing an investment in a top-of-the-line tile manufacturer. Pan pays attention to one factor most of all when she invests, whether a company has high growth potential or not. The company she's looking at may be stable, but she won't invest in old industries that generate low returns. She's only interested in high-risk, high-return investments. She's decided to give this venture further study. The desire of the Chinese government to search for new avenues of growth is behind the country's investment boom. Chinese leaders want to move from manufacturing-led growth to innovation, turning their nation into a self-innovating economy that will create cutting-edge technologies and businesses. To do that, the government has designated 10 growth areas in which China will develop core next-generation industries. This strategy has led to issues surrounding the funding needed to foster growth industries. Investment from state-owned banks and overseas investors fueled China's economic growth in the past. That funding flowed into state-owned enterprises and joint ventures, revving up the country's manufacturing engine. However, that engine has slowed down, decelerating foreign investment, and state-owned banks have reached their limit just trying to support existing industries. That's why the government is focused on the estimated $17 trillion in personal assets held by Chinese citizens. The problem is how to get that money to the growth industries. Government officials came up with a new idea. Channel the money by increasing the number of private sector investment companies, which had barely existed up to then. They enacted a new law to encourage the establishment of investment firms. And unlike most advanced nations, 
China didn't strictly regulate financial institutions, granting them considerable leeway and freedom. As a result, the number of investment companies increased rapidly from 2013. Now it's estimated there are more than 22,000. The government also boosted these firms' investments by giving them preferential tax breaks and other incentives. In response, investment companies began piling funds into startups. These investment firms now hold the key to this new possible driver of growth for China. The next time we link up with Pan Xiaoxi, she's making a move to invest in the virtual dating game startup she saw at the event. The company has been in business for only two years. <laughs> Virtual reality is related to the 10 big growth industries designated by the government. It's an area Pan is focused on. <laughs> Before investing in a company, Pan always meets the top management. She wants to make sure they really do have confidence in their technology. Pan likes the fact that these entrepreneurs did not lose their confidence in the face of her challenge. Pan studied overseas and went to graduate school in the UK. But she majored in art and learned about investment on her own. This is one of Pan's weapons for her investment activities, the network of 600,000 members of this returnee association. The Chinese leadership highly regards young people who have studied abroad, considering them the new driving force that will spur entrepreneurship and innovation. Pan serves as the head of one of the association's branches, overseeing some 20,000 members. She's gotten many of her clients and investment targets from this network. The business of investment is driven by the unseen power of personal connections unique to China. China's personal assets are pouring into growth industries through various types of new investment companies. A new frontier for securing these personal assets is the business of internet finance. The business has exploded since it first appeared a few years ago. Right now, across China, more than 2,000 companies are moving nearly $90 billion.
returns are high and can be up to 13% annually or more. Personal investors hurt by the volatility of the stock market are stampeding to this business. <laughs> One company that has attracted attention as a pioneer of internet finance is located in the financial hub of Pudong. Rongdao Wang is being flooded by delegations from around the country wanting to see its operations. On this day, they are welcoming a group of branch managers of conventional banks from Guangdong province. Rongdao Wang is being driven by the vigor of youth. Its 200 employees have an average age of 29. Their selling point is speed they can attract money very fast. At first, they post information on the internet on companies they've previously vetted. Usually, they can collect financing relatively easily for loans in the $10,000 unit range. In this case, the annual return is 9%. Repayment comes in 12 months. Plus, the original investments and the interest are 100% guaranteed. They are seeking individual investments, totaling $14,000. As soon as they start promoting a company, they immediately begin bringing in the money. They are collecting money hand over fist. Eight people invested. It's rare for the financing to turn sour. Only about three cases in every 1,000. In those instances, Rongdao Wang makes up the loss. This type of loan business is regulated in many other countries. In China, anyone with a smartphone can easily participate in these transactions. <laughs> the money being raised in this way will be lent as financing to companies in growth industries. A 2% commission fee is added on when the money is paid back. That's Rongdao Wang's profit. Conventional finance companies can secure funding in a month, but Rongdao Wang can do it in a week, or even just two hours. It's this speed that allows Rongdao Wang to offer small loans to many companies and thus fuel its own dramatic rise. Zhuo Han is the company's founder. He's credited with introducing internet financing for companies looking for funding. Once a chief financial officer for a large manufacturer, Zhuo learned about the financial difficulties subcontractors were having. This prompted him to establish Rongdao Wang in 2009. <laughs> Their targets are promising small to medium enterprises, or SMEs, in China's growth industries. Up to now, they've offered financing to some 10,000 companies. GDP的60 
，税收的五十，都是靠民营企业、中小企业去完成的。但是呢，他获得的金融服务呢，可能百分之三十都不到。所以呢，我们希望通过我们的努力呢，整合民营金融的力量，来服务真正的为中国做出那么多贡献的民营企业、中小企业。啊。Now, more than 2,000 companies are engaged in online financing, which has become a driving force in the world of investment. The Chinese government is placing ever greater expectations on the power of these companies to mobilize capital. Given its leading position in the field of internet financing, Rongdao Wang received an unusual mission in 2014 from the city of Shanghai. This is in 2014, also got the attention of the Shanghai government. Shanghai officials asked Rongdao Wang to help foster China's growth industries. Ground Zero was the Baoshan district in Shanghai. It's one of China's leading steel towns. Shanghai officials wanted Rongdao Wang to revitalize small and medium-sized contractors in the stagnating heavy industry. They asked Zhou to find companies that could thrive in growth industries and help them with financing. 这个区域呢，因为原来的中小企业呢，主要是服务于宝钢的。现在因为宝钢迁出了以后，这这个区域的中小企业也面临着整体的转型。在这个转型中呢，金融服务也是最需要的，所以我们在给他提供金融服务。Today, Joe is checking out a small steelworks company. For many years, the firm has been a subcontractor to a state-owned steel company in Shanghai. 城环保系统里面的配套管道啊，宝钢那个热轧厂，热轧厂，无尘环保厂。Joe's practice is to look carefully at the inner workings of a company and ascertain its strengths, q u a l i t y possesses a high technical capability of welding different metals precisely. 下面是碳钢的，它是一半一半的。He concludes this is also necessary for new industries, such as for the welding of new materials. It's not easy for these kinds of subcontractors to borrow money from existing financial companies. And for steel-related factories, it's even more difficult. Zhou gets down to business together with one of his employees in charge of the Baoshan district. The company needs around fourteen thousand dollars to stay afloat. They don't need to put up collateral. Joe and his team make an offering for the loan through the internet. Will anyone respond? Ah, 
融資してきたんですね。年化収益高呀，百分之九。有钱就投，投完了。もうどうなんですか？あと何分ですか？あ、二十分钟。二十分。Seven people invested. Joe and his staff do another risk check. Then they prepare to transfer the money to the ironworks company's account. Chinese 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 但是我们呢会贴近中央企业的需求，我们会告诉他一天或者两天就能把它审批下来。Rongdao Wang is putting its resources into another industry they feel has potential to grow. It is agricultural corporations. The sector is intertwined with the nation's ten big growth industries, but financing is not reaching it. Today, Jor is visiting a large-scale plantation in Anhui province that he's providing financing to. He's come to inspect these fields, which were recently damaged in a flood. This is our client's a 呃，今天因为这个前一段时间全国这个洪涝灾害，我们来看一下这一家我们的接管客户他有没有受灾，所以我们今天来了解一下他的情况，来看看。今天情况怎么样？属于属于受灾了，这是受灾了，这怎么受灾了是吧？哎，受灾了，对。我看情况还可以吧？成了，现在这个淹了一下，反正我们这里水主要是过过一下。With financing from Rongdao Wang, this agricultural corporation launched large-scale cultivation of kiwi fruit. The flooding happened just before the harvest. Jor is also visiting an aquaculture company that produces freshwater fish. With the Rongdao Wang Fund, the company expanded its operations and increased the varieties of fish it produces. However, the flood raised water levels in their ponds, and almost all the fry they had just purchased swam away. Now现在有七八十万的 the company will need additional financing to continue its operations. However, the risk is very high. The government expects rapidly growing new investment companies to play a major role in channeling funds to growth industries. Huge amounts of personal assets are flowing into these industries, helping give birth to 12,000 new companies every day. However, this investment boom is overheating as it goes beyond the government's intentions and causes a number of problems. In December 2015, authorities uncovered what's believed to be the biggest fraud case in China's history, 
Executives of an internet financing company embezzled more than $6.8 billion in investors' funds. They stole savings from some 900,000 people. And the trouble hasn't ended with this case. This is a consulting service for online finance problems. More than 600 cases are reported by telephone or email every week. In most instances, money that had been loaned out is not returned to investors. It said that up to now, one in three online finance companies has caused problems for its customers. In August 2016, the Chinese government finally unveiled regulations for internet finance. Among other things, the regulations impose lending limits and stricter financing oversight. Government leaders are beginning to try to contain this overextended boom. However, the powerful momentum unleashed by the torrent of money seeking profitable targets for investment is not going away. And as this industry remains hot, competition among investment companies is becoming more intense. That's forced Pan Xiaoxi to continue with her punishing schedule as she seeks new investment targets. In order to beat the competition, she's trying to find bigger and riskier investment projects. Today, she's visiting a venture company that's involved in a big project related to the environment and energy, an area the Chinese government is focusing on. This biomass power generation project produces electricity by burning agricultural and other waste. The company's original technology is used for making fuel. Agricultural waste is one of the causes of environmental pollution in rural areas. The company is turning this waste into fuel. They put it into this machine, and using their original pressure technology, they compress the waste, turning it into fuel. This entrepreneur is a former university researcher. He developed this special pressure technology he says he has achieved half of the combustion power of coal of the same weight. However, the construction of this power generation plant presents more risks than expected. The local government sold the land to the company at a cheap price. But the construction plan was overly optimistic, and the company depleted its funds covering basic building costs. Construction has been suspended for more than a year. The resumption of construction brings risks too. 
These include the problem of compensation during the work stoppage and the revamping of the basic construction plan. Company representatives stress that they've been getting inquiries from abroad, but the question is whether investors can actually get a return commensurate to the risk. It's a big investment, and if it fails, Pan's company will suffer serious damage. On top of that, there are no prospects of a quick return, something their clients expect. Pan decides to pass on the deal. Pan always works to get a high annual yield of 30% from her company's investments. It's a hard thing to do if she doesn't pile up a lot of small investments. Pan feels caught between the demand for profit from her clients and the expectations of the government. The pressure to continue to produce results is relentless. <笑>然后学校的因为优秀毕业生嘛学校的领导就会跟你合照 in order to survive the competition, Pan has worked day and night to expand her business. One case that came up helped to remind her of how hard it is to find diamonds in the rough as she continues to mine the world of startup businesses. The source of the problem is a doctor of Chinese medicine who was introduced to her by an influential person. The doctor needed financing because he wanted to commercialize his acupressure health method. Pan liked the idea, and so she prepared offices for him and made up a proposal for his business plan. But then a problem arose, and they were forced to suspend the business. <laughs> Pan stopped the project after she says she found out the doctor used her proposal as bait to hold parties to gather money, possibly illegally.
she was caught off guard because the connection came from that trusted, influential individual. Pan called that person's office, but they wouldn't answer. She had someone else call to protest. The two parties cannot agree on anything. Pan believed that personal connections were the key to success in Chinese society. It was the first time she'd been betrayed by one. Meanwhile, staff at Rongdao Wang have been very busy responding to a new government regulation released in August 2016. They are facing more scrutiny as the government ratchets up its inspections of internet finance operations. The time and cost required to ready themselves for the inspections have increased dramatically. They are beginning to worry about the impact on their hallmark, their speedy financing. Today, Rongdao Wang begins the difficult task of reviewing the additional funding for the two companies damaged by the flood. Mm. 其他的稳定的这个经济来源建议可以起设信给他 decides to provide the additional financing, pushing aside their concerns about risks. 我们要做的工作就是把中国老百姓的资金、财富配置到 最能产生价值的地方，它就是中国的中小企业和小微企业。因为我们接触的都是最基层的，接触的都是这个经济体，整个这个国家经济体的细胞。我从他们的身上感受到这一点。Will they be able to raise the money for the additional financing despite the risks? 渔场呢也就五分钟了 But as always, they raise the money just like that. Then there's the ironworks company that is asking Rongdao Wang to provide working capital financing. 
It's been six days since the money for the loan was collected through the internet. The person in charge of the loan from Rongdao Wang arrives. Speedy financing is the lifeblood of Rongdao Wang. Will they be able to continue to fulfill that role under the new regulation regime? In the end, it took more than a month for the company to get its financing. After getting badly burned by one investment, Pan has just received a good offer. A big name investor has asked her to participate in a large project he's just launched. Pan's next focus of business is China's entertainment industry, which the government values as a new soft culture export. While being aware of government policies, Pan is off on another trip to look for a promising target for investment. China is now a venture capital superpower, producing 12,000 startups every day. But the question is, how many leaders of the next generation industries will it be able to foster? The money of 1.4 billion people continues to change hands in the country's finance capital to feed the growth of a great China. NHK Documentary. On a hill overlooking the ocean, there is an isolated phone booth with a disconnected telephone inside. Many people who lost friends or family in the Great East Japan earthquake come here to speak to their departed loved ones. We listen to their thoughts and feelings. NHK World TV from Japan.
Hello and welcome to NHK Newsline. I'm Keiki Chihanada in Tokyo with the latest at this hour. Malaysia's foreign ministry has announced it is expelling North Korean ambassador Kang Chol over the killing of Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of the North's leader Kim Jong-un. The announcement came shortly before 10 p.m. on Saturday local time. The ambassador is required to leave Malaysia within 48 hours. The ministry will be deporting Khan as a persona non grata or an unwelcome person. The ministry says it informed Pyongyang of the decision. He has criticized Malaysian authorities for their investigation, calling the incident a frame-up.